Your AP and IB credits don't mean sh Do you know how hard it is to say completely neutral when talking about a course that you absolutely hate? Fun fact, this course was the first course that I actually failed a midterm in because it is the reason why I despise chemistry now. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my first year of UBC Engineering. Of the 13 absolutely insane courses that I took in first year engineering, one of these courses was Chem 154. In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience from taking Chem 154 during the 2022 slash 2023 school year. And all of the information in this video is subject to change in the future. So please don't get mad at me if your final exam is worth like 60% of your grade now instead of 45% like I had it. And timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. So what is Chem 154 all about? In this course, you'll get an introduction to the principles of chemistry and its relevance in areas of engineering. The concepts that will be covered in this course include chemical bonding and matter, thermodynamics and kinetics, and electrochemistry. If some of this sounds like high school review, you're right. Most, if not all of the concepts taught in Chem 154 may have been taught in high school for you, but it does introduce some new concepts that we'll get into soon. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how Chem 154 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week you will have three hours of lectures where you'll learn the main course concepts. During your lectures, you'll have a mix of lecture slides to take notes from, eye clicker questions to answer, and in-class worksheets to complete and submit onto Canvas. These in-class worksheets have questions for you to test your understanding of the concepts during the lectures, and sometimes the professors will go through some of the worksheet questions for you. In terms of homework in Chem 154, you will have assignments on a site called Achieve that will be due each week. Unfortunately, I no longer have access to my Achieve account because it got disabled, but it's basically the chemistry equivalent website of mastering physics or web work. There are usually around 20 questions in each Achieve assignment, and they have a mix of numerical, short answer, and matching questions. Oh, and achieve assignments do deduct points for incorrect attempts. Throughout the term, you will have four quizzes to complete every two to four weeks. These quizzes are to be completed within a 24 hour time window after they have been opened on Canvas, and you will only have 20 minutes to do so. These quizzes have around five to eight questions and consist of a mix of multiple choice, short answer, and written questions. Chem 154 also has a laboratory component to it, which during my year was held virtually through Zoom. Yes, you heard that right, an online chemistry lab. I've already expressed my thoughts in the past about how stupid I think this part of the course is, but I will save you from hearing it again for now. You will have five labs to complete for this course that alternate between pre-lab and post-lab activities each week. The pre-lab stuff usually involves reading through the lab information, doing a short activity or calculation, and completing a pre-lab quiz on Canvas. During your three-hour lab session every two weeks, in which attendance is taken through eye clicker questions, you'll discuss the concepts that will be used for the lab and clarify exactly what you need to do for the post-lab activities. Speaking of, the post-lab stuff usually consists of a post-lab quiz that will most likely involve performing some calculations based on the data that is given to you. And if all of this sounds really confusing to you, that's because it was and it still is to this day for me. In terms of the required materials for this course, there's really only one thing that you need to purchase, and that is the access code for Achieve 
which can be found on the UBC Bookstore website. The name of the access code is listed on screen right now, and it costs around $35.55. Additionally, there is an optional textbook for Chem 154 that can be accessed online for free. And I'll leave a link to it in the description below if you'd like to check it out for yourself. Now let's move on to what you're actually going to learn in Chem 154. There will be 13 weeks in the term and each week will focus on a specific topic or concept. The first seven weeks of Chem 154 will be dedicated to discussing concepts related to chemical bonding and matter, which you will probably have covered some of it in high school. These first seven weeks cover concepts such as the periodic table, Lewis structures, Vesper theory, intermolecular forces, phases of matter, and polymers. The last six weeks of Chem 154 will cover concepts related to thermodynamics, kinetics, and electrochemistry. There is quite a lot of overlap between these concepts and the concepts that are taught in Physics 157 like the ideal gas law, entropy, and the laws of thermodynamics. But Chem 154 also covers things like enthalpy, the spontaneity of reactions, chemical equilibrium, chemical kinetics, and a little bit of electrochemistry at the end. In terms of the labs that we did during my first year, I will say that it's highly unlikely that future year's labs will be the same as what I did. So take my labs as a sample of what you could be doing. The labs that we did in Chem 154 included one about atomic orbitals and energies, one about the standardization of an acid and a base, one about galvanic cells and electrochemistry, one about hot packs and cold packs, and one about chemical kinetics. Again, these labs will probably be different in the future, so don't start doing your pre-lab preparations now. In terms of the grading scheme for Chem 154, here's the breakdown of what you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Starting with the weekly in-class worksheets, these are weighted at 5% of your final grade and marked based on completion only. Then we've got your achieve assignments, which are weighted at 10%, and your quizzes, which are weighted at 12.5%. Your lab component of the course is weighted at 15%. At the end of the course, you will have your three lowest worksheet scores, your lowest quiz score, and your lowest achieve score dropped from your final grade. In terms of exams, you will have one midterm exam worth 12.5% of your final grade and a final exam worth 45%. These exams have a mixture of multiple choice, short answer, and long answer questions. In Chem 154, this is a course where you need to have passing grades for each of the lecture and lab components individually in order to pass the course. That means that if you fail the lab component but have a perfect score in everything else, you will still fail the course. Oh my goodness, do you know how hard it is to say completely neutral when talking about a course that you absolutely hate? All right, now it's time to grill this course by talking about all of the survival tips and advice that I wish I knew before going into Chem 154. And listen closely because you're gonna need them. My first tip, which will actually make the course somewhat more bearable, will be to go to the lectures hosted by Professor Mark Thatcher. Personally, I had Professor Joe Yang in my timetable, who, in my nicest description possible, basically didn't teach anything at all. And it was just really difficult for me to learn in his lectures. So luckily enough, I was able to find space to go to Professor Thatcher's lectures in my timetable, and I was able to learn so much more. He was part of the reason why I was actually able to pass Chem 154, so I would definitely recommend going to his lectures if you can. The next survival tip has to do with the lectures, and that is to ask your lecture TA for help whenever you need it. Believe it or not, Chem 154 was the only course in my entire first year that I actually went to an office hour session for. And that was because the TA for my lecture section was pretty good, honestly. But it was mostly because I skipped the first lecture of the polymers unit to study for a physics midterm, and I got really screwed up after that, so I really needed to go to those office hours. Pro tip, don't skip the first lecture of the polymers unit. The lecture TAs are super kind, and most of the time they can explain the concepts better than the professor themselves. 
This next tip has to do with the extremely annoying online labs, and that is to work with friends and science students during your online labs. I made the mistake of doing a couple of the labs on my own, and that was a really bad idea because it was really hard to get help whenever I got stuck on something. And during the labs, it is very common to not know what is going on at any given time. Working with friends honestly makes the labs slightly more bearable, and it's more likely that you'll actually get a higher grade on the lab quizzes if you work with your friends. Also, it's actually really nice to have some friends in the faculty of science because they actually do some of these labs in person. So some of them will know exactly what to do when you have no idea what's going on. And here are just some rapid fire tips that I really need to get off my chest. The organic chemistry tutor on YouTube will be your best friend in this course. There is nowhere near enough time to do the midterm exam and expect the class average for that midterm to be about 52%. And fun fact, this course was the first course that I actually failed a midterm in, but I still managed to pass the course in the end. And no, you do not need a lab coat or safety goggles for the online labs. And if any of you are wondering, I scored a 68% in Chem 154, and the class average for my section was 67%, which is tied with two other courses as the lowest class average of all my classes in first year. It says a lot about the course now, does it? And that's about it for everything you need to know before going into Chem 154. I really, really hope this video can just help one person going into first year UBC engineering in the future because I feel like my suffering in first year wasn't for nothing. And especially for this course because it is the reason why I despise chemistry now. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.